Greetings, Ian from RTO here. Welcome to Thursday and welcome to the Battle of the Debuts and the little mini series we're doing, I've Gone Solo, uh, where we look at a band that a male, an important person leaves the band or gets sacked. So they go and make an album and we put that album up against the next album of the band that they left. We got one that people have been talking about and when I said I was doing this, this is one that people wanted me to do and it's Black Sabbath against Ozzy Osbourne. As we know, Black Sabbath formed in 68 by Tony Iommi and Bill Ward and they recruited Geezer Butler and Ozzy Osbourne had success. But by the time Never Say Die came round, um, Ozzy, well, they were all very toxic, you know, drugs and lots of alcohol. They made the Never Say Die have our album, which is not particularly a brilliant one. Um, they went on tour with that. Uh, Van Halen was supporting them on that tour, and they used to blow. Black Sabbath off the stage regularly on that tour, according to what people have written. So, tour finished. They went, returned to Los Angeles to write what would be their next album. Uh, the entire band were using drugs and alcohol to the max. They'd come up with some ideas. Ozzy just showed no interest. And, uh, he was more in, thought it was more important to do drink and lots of cocaine. And you know, it, it got to a point where the band wanted to go forward and Ozzy wasn't in there. And in the end, they sacked him. And uh, that was that. So, um,. They recruited um, Ronnie James Dio. So, this is what happened next. So, the next album to come out from the Black Sabbath camp was in 1980, and it was called Heaven and Hell. Um, and this. This album featured Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, Bill Ward, and Ronnie James Dio. An additional performer was the was Jeff Nichols, someone that played keyboards with the band for quite a while, and it was produced by the magnificent Martin Birch. Um, first track on this one, of course, is Neon Nights. Wow, what a way to announce yourself in the band. Great track this is. One of the great opening tracks of any Black Sabbath album. An absolutely brilliant track. Love that track. Then we get another great track. Um, Children of the Sea. Love that gentle start. And then you get that great riff that Tony came up with. And it's a brilliant track. Lady Evil. One of the great geezer, but the bass lines. Um, great track here. Some great riffs from Tony. And then we get the classic, Heaven and Hell. Uh, this is probably the second best song Ronnie ever sang on in his whole career. It's just fantastic. The bass lines, Grant, the guitar solos and riffs from Tony, amazing. Bill's drumming on this is brilliant. It's just an all-round great song. Wishing well. Um, one of the weaker tracks on here. Uh, but it's still reasonable. Die Young. Brilliant. Jeff Nichols getting involved here with that wonderful um, keyboard intro. Great song. Great solo from Tony. Love that track. Walk Away, now this is the one track on the album that I'm not keen on. Um, it's this one I don't like. Lonely in the word, Lonely is the word. Uh, I think this has got one of the best solos from Tony Iommi and it's just got a great bass line as well. It's a great track. One of the, dark, the um, deep cut tracks on this album. 
Um, I think this was that album that really revitalised Black Sabbath and Ronnie James Dio saved their skin. Um, and it still reminds the best album that Ronnie ever did with Black Sabbath. Um, that's what I think, but what do the critics think? Well, the album was very successful. It became the band's highest charting album since Sabotage and the third best selling album for Black Sabbath behind Paranoid and Master Reality. Um, there's not many uh, people have critiqued it. Um, it is ranked in 37 in Rolling Stone's 100 Greatest Metal Albums of All Time. So let's have a look at what they thought. So all music gave, this is like five stars, so they gave it four and a bit. Drowned in sound, I like the name of that, eight out of ten. Martin Popoff gave it a ten out of ten. The Rolling Stone Album Guide gave it a four out of five and Sputnik Music, five out of five. Did well in the charts, um, got to number nine here in the UK. Number 28 on the Billboard 200. Pretty impressive. Went gold in the Canada in um, UK and platinum in America. So let's have a look at the nuts and bolts of this one. Song quality. Ronnie James Dio writing with Geezer Butler. Some great songs. They sounded refreshed on this after Never Sorry Die and Bill Ward's drumming on this is terrific. So I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. Production. Just have to say the name, don't you? Martin Birch. Great production. Um, so it's 5 out of 5 just because it's Martin Birch. Um, reception. Went down a storm. It, you know, it did, 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 did very, very well. Well received between, sounds like, the reviewers and um, the fans. So I'm going to give that a 4 out of 5. Cover design. It's a great cover. Iconic cover. From the 80s. That's a 5 out of 5 for me. It's a really good cover. So, for Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath, gives us a total of 18 out of 20. So, let's move on to the man that was sacked, Ozzy Osbourne. So, he went under the management of the Ardens. It was Don Arden and, of course, Sharon, who he eventually married, of course. And Ozzy Osbourne formed the Blizzard of Oz which featured Lee Kerslake of Uriah Heep. Bassist Bob Daisley, who's played with Rain who played with Rainbow, Uriah Heep. Went on to do some work with Gary Moore. Key Bordist Don Airy, Coliseum, Rainbow Deep Purple, and guitar guitarist Randy Rhodes of Quiet Riot. And the record company would eventually title the group's debut album, Blizzard of Odds, simply credited to Ozzy Osbourne. Lots of controversial in here. It was co-written um, by Bob Daisley. They all contributed, but they didn't get the royalties. And Lee, it was finally sorted before Lee sadly passed away, which was great. So, Blizzard of Oz was released in September 1980, which was just after Heaven and Hell, which was um, the, in April. Just forgot the date there, sorry folks. And it was that first release. So, 
It features Ozzy Osbourne on lead vocals and harmony vocals, Randy Rose on the electric and classical guitars, Bob Daisley on the bass, Lee Kerslake on the drums, Tubular Bells, Don Airy on the keyboards, and produced by the, themselves. First track is I Don't Know. Classic song from Ozzy Osbourne. I love Randy Rhodes' riffs on this. It's a great track. I love that track. Crazy Train, another classic. Great bass line from Bob Daisley, and the guitar work from Randy Rose is superb. But it's not my favourite track on the album. It's a classic, but it's one of them tracks that's overplayed. Goodbye to Romance. Not for me, I never like that track. Then we get D, which is a 52nd thing of Randy Rose doing a bit of guitar work. Then we get uh, Suicide Solution. Classic track. Got himself. People tried to blame um, this song for getting people to. teenagers to commit suicide. But it was thrown out of court, basically, because. Um, they were on drugs and everything, and they were just listening to the music. It's just a great track. Great drumming from Lee on this. One of his best he did when he was with the Blizzard of Oz. Then we do get my favourite track on here. Mr Crowley. I love um, Don's opening keyboards on this. And it's got the best guitar solo I think Randy Rhodes ever did. Uh, it's a brilliant track. No Bone Movies. Another solid track. Um, the solo from Randy is excellent again. It's one of the deep cut, cut tracks on this album. It's absolutely um, brilliant. And I prefer this one actually to Crazy Train. Revelation Mother Earth. It's okay. Some good drifts on it. But nothing memorable for me. Steal Away. Another of them great um, deep cut tracks on this album. Brilliant rocker. Great bass line from Bob Daisley. And a solid guitar solo from um, Randy Rhodes. Um, so great vocals on here from Ozzy. So it's a really good album. What do I think of this? Well, I think this was a solid start for Ozzy. Ozzy. The, you know, it produced four classics, that songs that people love today. Um... I think he got better and better as he went on. But as an um, opening uh, album, very good. Great guitar player, Randy Rhodes. So sad what happened to him. Um, I think if, he'd have, if he had lived, I think he would have been with... These two would have never parted. I think that Randy Rhodes would, be, would have been still part of the the lineup even today okay what did the critics think as, as again there's not much actually written about it I've looked all over the net, internet couldn't find much but the tracks Crazy Train and Mr Crowley were released as singles in 1980 in America uh, Got Crazy Train got to number 9 Mainstream Rock Airplay Chart it cha um the song achieved a two times platinum certification. Though it received little airplay upon its initial release, Crazy, Crazy Train has become one of Ozzy's signature traps. Track, sorry, and a classic staple of rock radio playlists. Hence why it's not my favourite, because I have to think it's over, overplayed. So let's have a look. All Music gave it four stars. BBC Music gave it a favourable. Music Radar, favourable. Now, Martin Popoff, when he starts, it's so small on here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He gave me an eight out of ten. There we go. Rolling Stone gave it four out of five. Uncut three. And Encyclopedia Popular Music gave it three. How did it do in the charts? UK charts, it got to number seven. Uh, US Billboard 221 Silver in the United Kingdom 
silver then it was re-released in 2011 and it made another silver so that's pretty impressive and in the United States five times platinum okay let's have a look at the nuts and bolts song quality great songs um, four classics you know that's how good they are written by the band um, so I'm gonna give it four out of five production lacked a proper producer although they did do a reasonable job on it I feel that some of the sound is not as good and I think these tracks always sounded better live I mean, obviously there was some stuff with Randy you know there's live stuff that Ozzy did with Randy it was a much better sounding so I'm going to give that a 4 out of 5 reception um, again great everyone loved it um, uh, you know for in this country it was released when it was released in 1980 silver and then when it had the re-release went silver again that's something else and then in America it just went absolutely mental didn't it five times platinum so I'm gonna give that a four out of five cover design I think it could have been a better cover okay it's got Aussie on the front but uh, the colors all wrong uh, you, you know he blends too much in with the background so I'm gonna give that a four out of five so that's all the fours for Blizzard of Oz by Ozzy Osbourne, giving us a total of 16. So technically, Heaven and Hell won this. But it was two great albums. One revitalised Black Sabbath, and the other one revitalised um, and, fo and focused for Ozzy Osbourne. I do like um, both albums, but there's just something about the Heaven and Hell album. I don't know if it's because it's got Ronnie James Dio on it. I just think it's a, or the production by Martin Birch, I just think it's a better album. So I'm going to give today's win to Black Sabbath 7 and Hell um, but will you agree with me so uh, you know the drill um, you can vote tonight on, uh, on the live stream or on the community page or if you're on um, watch on Twitter there's a poll on there as well so that's all for this one um, later we've got the um, third of the new shows in this pick and mix and we we've called this one a wander down the sidewalk where we look at the top 10 singles on this day the 15th of December from the year 1964 and of course I'll be here later from 8 p.m. for the live stream so see you later. Bye for now.